Hi, I'm Dr. Silvia Sanduliano. I'm a gastroenterologist at the Department of Internal Medicine, Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology of the University Hospital Maastricht in the Netherlands. I was invited by the editors of the AGA journals to discuss a paper coming out in the April issue of Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology titled In Vivo Diagnosis and Classification of Colorectal Neoplasia Using Confocal Endomicroscopy. In general, Postpolypectomy surveillance guidelines rely on clinic and histologic features of adenomas, namely size, grade of dysplasia or velocity. Unfortunately, in common practice, recording of these features frequently lacks precision and uniformity, which may limit the efficacy of surveillance practices. Confocal laser endomicroscopy is a novel technology which allows real-time in vivo microscopy of the mucosa. This technology has been in use at our hospital since April 2007. The primary aim of our study was to describe differential features of adenomatous and non-adenomatous colorectal polyps by chromoendoscopy guided endomicroscopy. Secondly, we assessed the predictive value of this technique for diagnosis of colorectal neoplasia. Ex vivo histology was used as gold standard. We focused on patients at high risk for colorectal cancer, namely patients with Lynch syndrome, familial or prior history of colorectal cancer, as reliable surveillance guidelines are mandatory in this population. Endomicroscopy images were obtained using fluorescein intravenously and acriflavin applied topically. This combined use of two contrast agents enabled us to characterize both general tissue architecture as well as cytonuclear features. I will show you some twin pictures illustrating endomicroscopy images versus conventional histology. This is normal colonic mucosa showing regular crypt architecture and a crypt detail with normal nuclei within the epithelial cells, the white dots. Here we see a hyperplastic polyp with characteristic stellar appearance of the crypt openings and here, a traditional serrated adenoma, which shows epithelial surface maturation, regular crypts, and pseudostratification of nuclei. This is a tubular adenoma showing slightly irregular crypts, and here a poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma showing crypt destruction, neoangiogenesis with leakage of fluorescein into the surrounding tissue, and islands of dark malignant cells. In the next pictures, differential features of low-grade versus high-grade dysplasia will be illustrated. This is a large flat adenoma, and the microscopy showed only slightly irregular crypts and pseudostratification of nuclei, indicating low-grade dysplasia. And this is a flat lesion with a central depression, and the microscopy showed complex crowding of crypts, suggesting high-grade dysplasia. In summary, this study indicates that chromoendoscopy in conjunction with confocal endomicroscopy may permit in vivo differentiation of adenomatous from non-adenomatous colorectal polyps with 96% accuracy. We proposed a systematic classification of colorectal lesions by endomicroscopy. We attempted to define more objective criteria for grading of dysplasia, as this may influence surveillance intervals. Herewith, we defined the adenoma dysplasia score as a simple tool to discriminate high-grade dysplasia from low-grade dysplasia. 
this might be a step towards improving the dialogue between endoscopists and pathologists to finally secure the diagnosis of colorectal neoplasia. We believe that chromoendoscopy-guided confocal endomicroscopy may offer considerable potential to ultimately fine-tune surveillance programs, particularly in high-risk groups. However, this data should be validated in larger studies. Thank you.